Loud. All right, I'm recording. Well, welcome guys. Once again, my name is Casey Washak, co-creator of the Fit and 42 and Fit and 42 Studios. And tonight we're going to be talking about something that's very near and dear to my heart, something I've studied a lot. And what we're going over tonight is kind of like a hodgepodge of like five or six different books and courses I've done on productivity and time management. And, um, and honestly, I'm kind of a uh, connoisseur of this. I, I always, I'm always trying to get the edge, trying to find a way to do a little more. And this isn't something I've mastered. So I'm always looking for like the next book or the next course to do in order to find kind of that one little extra thing to make, to help me fit more in. Uh, like a lot of you, I wear a lot of different hats. Um, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I own a business, I, you know, I have a career, I have some things I want to do personally, right, with my fitness and my own goals. So it's, it's, a, hard, it's a hard thing to try, to try to fit it all in. And that's what I want to go over tonight. And I have a nice little PowerPoint presentation for you. So let's get that going. All right, so tonight, moving the needle, time strategies to be more productive. So why are we doing this, ladies and gentlemen? We're doing this because we all have goals. I mean, I, I, my, my team, Fit and, 42 Fit, <laughs> Fit and 42 Studios, knows you guys because you guys all came to us with specific goals, and that's just for health and fitness. That's not in other areas of your life. So you got to understand the biggest hurdle we have with helping people is people telling us they have no time. And believe it or not, right now we're still meeting people who tell us that same excuse, I have no time. So these same people who had nine to five jobs, who were taking the kids to school, dropping the kids off, picking the kids up, and doing all these things, uh, you know, making dinner, all this stuff, nine to five included, had no time. Then we get quarantined and we're locked in our house. And they still have no time. And um, so what I want to do is make sure that's none of us. And I want to make sure that we are not, there's a saying that you'll see in here, that we're not prioritizing um, our, our tasks, but we're, we're creating tasks to prioritize our goals. Because we all, you know, there's things we want out of life. And if we can't find time to do them, we'll never get to them. So <clears throat> I'm really big into time blocking. And this is some of the major reasons we should time block. You know, um, if, if you find yourself saying any of these, then, then you're, you're at the right seminar. All right. So if you find, if you find you're juggling many different projects, responsibilities, um, you know, Elon Musk is an example right here, uses this method, method to run two major companies. Uh, you know, one, he's trying to get to Mars and the other, he's trying to make an engine that's completely electric. <laughs> so, um, if you spend too much time in reactive mode, just constantly waiting for the next thing to happen that you need to jump and take care of, then this might be a reason to start time blocking. Um, if you just find you can't get into the groove with things because you're just constantly chopped up by meetings and, and once again, being reactive, time blocking. All right. And this goes along with, you know, same thing, battling constant interruptions throughout the day. Like you can't get into a groove. And then, like I was just hitting on, struggling to find time and mental capacity for big picture things, things that we really want. All right. Like I said in the beginning, the reason why I'm doing this seminar and the reason why I know all of you is because we have goals. And I know each one of the managers at the studios, each one of our partners has sat down with you and we, we preach this all the time 
about creating what we call SMART goals. And I'm sure each one of you has it or has SMART goals, at least in the health and fitness side, because that's one of the things we require of all our members is to have some SMART goals, which mean specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time sensitive. All right, um, we've gone over this ad nauseum, so I won't necessarily dive deep into this right now. But what I wanna do now, the first thing we wanna do, and so hopefully you guys have some pen and paper because I have a lot of like bullet points, definitely things that um, I want you to take notes on. And this is all actionable steps. This whole, this whole um, seminar, is kind of a step-by-step had had a time block how to create a schedule a time block and so we're about to start that and the first thing that we need to do is audit how we're spending our time right now and so what it's it's a daunting task you don't have to do this all in one chunk but ideally you're going to write out every little thing you do in a week now you can take a week to do that. You can do it day by day. You can do it hour by hour, meaning um, it is uh, 9.30 central time, Texas time, right? So I can do what I did from eight to nine. I, um, I looked at my phone, I looked at my email. You know, you can sit there and go hour by hour. So let the hour pass. And then what did you do that last hour? And the whole point of this, well, I'll get into that in a second, but I just want to give you guys some stats. So these are some stats I pulled up for this. The average person spends 2.34 hours checking email a day. All right. The average person spends 153 minutes on social media a day. You know, the, these, these phones are getting really good because they'll tell you how much time you spend on the, on the phone now. And uh, that's really eye-opening, right? Um, the average American now, it used to be four hours a day, but now it's five hours and four minutes. The average American watches TV per day. Now that's almost a full work week. That's pretty crazy. All right, <laughs> these are some fun ones. Um, the average American spends 35 minutes deciding what to eat. That's a day. That's a half hour. <laughs> this is pretty crazy. All right, this is a fun one. 16 minutes women take per day deciding what to wear. Men are much better. They're right behind women at 14 minutes. So once again, pretty crazy. And then this is a fun one. Seven minutes the average American spends per day thinking about exercise. Like thinking about it, like I should probably work out. And I should probably work out. You know what, I'm gonna work out later. Seven minutes cumulatively per, in their day, they thought about exercise. So pretty nuts. So we're gonna audit our day. We're gonna, we're gonna audit how we spend it, what, how much time we watch TV, how many times we looked at Facebook or, or Instagram, how many times we checked email, and just do that little by little each hour. Ideally, we're gonna do that for a week. And then, now that we have all that information, now we can start, all right? So once we have everything we've done, we've brain dumped it. We've brain dumped everything we've done, We need to create first a not to do list. So look at all the things you're doing. And the goal is to take 10 things, 10 things you, you see that you know you shouldn't be doing and get them off that list. All that list that you just had, get them off. And then we're gonna go over this a lot more, but the idea of automate, delegate, or eliminate. So uh, if this is something we talk a lot about in entrepreneurship, um, you know, the fact that you're not a one man show. And if I tried to do everything 
in our company, we wouldn't have five gyms. We probably wouldn't even have one because I can't do everything. I need to be able to rely on other people. I need to be able to automate some things. And there's some things that shouldn't even be on my list or it's a, it's a, let me just say it like this. One of the smartest things I've ever, uh, pieces of advice I ever got is a dollar shouldn't do a dime's job. <clears throat> um, so if, and we can look at our households the same way. If you, this is, this is what this gentleman told me, a mentor of mine, if I make $30 an hour and it costs, um, let, let's just say this, um, it costs me 120 bucks um, uh, for um, 120 bucks uh, a month for someone to mow my lawn every week, I should get rid of that because that's equal to or less than what I, I bring in. So that's anything that I can do that, that would bring in more money. If I spent a little more time on my, on my craft, on my career, and I, I was able to bring in a little more money, um, then that's anything below that I should, I should delegate and, and pass off. And it's a really interesting time to be talking about that right now. But this is, um, this is something you want to look at towards the future. <clears throat> So things you can automate, oh, things you can automate. So this, we live in an amazing time and, and you guys are, are, you guys are noticing right now, especially in, in the current environment we're in, how many people here are ordering food constantly? How many people, I mean, people are ordering groceries. You know, I, um, I feel I feel like I was really ahead of the curve because one of the things I hate most is, uh, is walking through the grocery store with toilet paper because I feel like everybody knows what you're doing, right? <laughs> and so um, I, I decided when we opened the, the, the gym out here in Texas, I was going to get that automated. So Amazon every two weeks would send me toilet paper. And crazy enough, um, our gym wasn't using that much. So I, I have this hoard of toilet paper that I've just been sitting on. And um, it was nuts that all of a sudden it became such a commodity. <laughs> and uh, so if anybody needs any, I know the shortage is kind of gone, but if anybody needs any, let me know. I can send it your way. All right. Another thing. So we're big into batching and we'll get into batching and ta task batching later. So that's not necessarily something you automate. But some of, you, some of you guys who aren't really good cooks, maybe you look at some of these um, like blue aprons, uh, you know, the, these companies that like the, the food's already prepped, all you got to do is cook it. Or even the, the meal deliveries where the food's already cooked and you just got to heat it up. Once again, the whole idea here is creating more time, more time doing things. Like if you absolutely enjoy cooking, Please do it. But for example, we're really big in batch as we're big into batching for many reasons when it comes to food, because one, you're never reactionary when it comes to food. If you already have everything cooked for the week Two, you get to dictate exactly what, how much everything. So you're never caught at work with no food to where you need to, uh, you need to just run across the street to the, the nearest fast food restaurant and look for their healthiest option. So that's why we've always been big into batching food. And two, because it's, you, you do it at one period of time in the week. I, I think it's kind of crazy uh, personally, because we've been batching for so long to have to like spend, um, what are we going to eat tonight? What, what, what was the stat earlier? How much time? 35 minutes deciding what to eat. And then maybe I have to go to the grocery store to get those ingredients and then spend the however long to cook it. All after like a long day's work. And then to have to do it all over again.
and again and again and again instead of doing it all at one time. Some more things you can automate, guys. Um, like we were talking about, um, somebody clean your house. Unless this is some for some people, it's therapeutic, and they like the time, and and they they're very particular. But you can find somebody to clean your house and you can go potentially do other things. Clothes. I know uh, when our, our kids were first born, like, especially the smaller they are, like they're kind of, you know, the, the size, it doesn't, like, it just fits. You know, onesies and stuff just end up fitting. So like all that stuff can be bought online. And then now with like shoes and everything, like Zappos makes it so easy to, to just order. They ship it to you. You try it on. It doesn't fit. You send it right back. If it fits, you keep it. So the whole idea is time is invaluable. And a lot, a lot of time, and a lot of times we're wasting it. And, and these minutes just pass. And especially when we have big goals. If we have big goals and we can't find time to, to do them or to, to focus on them, then we definitely need to figure out how to shave some of these things down to create more time. Or like I said, we, talk, we didn't really talk much about delegating, but maybe get you know, somebody else in your family to do the grocery shopping, you know, like cover more ground with two people doing something instead of one. So this is, the key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. Stephen Covey. And so I feel um, this is something I know I, I'm still working on and I, I still need to kind of protect my time and to make sure that um, a lot of what I'm doing is because of the vision I have, where I want the company to go, where I want my family to end up, what I want for my life. So if I'm not working on those things because I'm doing mundane tasks like mowing the lawn, that's not helping anybody. <clears throat> so, all right. We don't necessarily want to do to-do lists. There's flaws in to-do lists. One of the biggest flaws in to-do lists is that the more you write on it, the more daunting it becomes, the more anxiety you get when you even look at it. So you don't even want to look at it. So nothing gets done. Secondly, you tend to go for the easy wins. Like the, the stuff that you can knock out like that, which is probably not the highest priority stuff. The stuff that's going to move the needle, the name of this thing, move the needle in your life and, and get you like closer to your goals or, or get you that, that promotion or, or whatever you're trying to achieve. Um, it's probably not those little tasks that like, you know, uh, you know, uh, put the mail in the mailbox, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> so, um, so to do lists are kind of flawed in that respect because what ends up happening is we end up going for the easy wins. We keep putting off the big tasks. So instead guys, what we want to do, is we want to plan out our week. We want to prioritize our week. And this is what's called the Eisenhower matrix. Dwight D. Eisenhower, 34th president, uh, was known for his productivity. And this was kind of his thing. There's four quadrants here. You guys can all see this, right? So quadrant one is important, urgent. This is like, uh, you know, your kid just fell down, broke his leg the house is on fire. Like that's the stuff that needs your immediate attention. Typically it's not, it's none of it's scheduled. It's just stuff that like, there is no way around it. Um, and it's typically, um, I mean, maybe, uh, I, I'm trying to think of something that's not like doom and gloom that would fit in here, but in the Marine Corps, the general shows up on base and he's coming to our barracks. Like crap, with this, we got to clean, we got to make this thing look perfect. So that ruins the whole day. That's way outside our control, um, but it needs to get done. Where we want to spend most of our time, guys, is important, not urgent. 
that's the stuff that's where that's the stuff we plan that's the stuff that um that matters to us the stuff you're literally going to write down in a daily planner or google calendar of the things you want to get done that's important not urgent your workouts, you know, hopefully you're scheduling your workouts and you're trying to make the same time every day. That's important, not urgent. It's scheduled. It's, it's, it's in the calendar. It's not something that comes up last minute. Now we're going to go to not important, urgent. This is when like random phone calls, um, you know, you're at work and they're like, hey, team meeting real quick, <laughs> you know, and you're like, ah, you know, once again, you get thrown out of your groove. Um, it's, it's stuff that comes up that that's, uh, once again, not going to necessarily move the needle, but it's, it, it kind of like blindsides you. And so th that's, that's something we definitely want to avoid the uh, not important urgent. And for you entrepreneurs, that's the stuff you delegate. Okay, and then, and same with uh, this last one, not urgent, not important. That's kind of, um, a lot of that ends up being our time wasters. That's, you know, just binge watching, you know, TV or Netflix, that's, um, you know, going on your phone and, you know, just, you know, looking at, you know, you, you see a notification for Facebook and then all of a sudden 30 minutes later, you realize you just went down this rabbit hole. Um, um, just, just, you know, junk emails, just, it's, it's the stuff that you're, you're definitely not putting into your calendar. And it's the stuff that most likely if it disappeared, you wouldn't even notice. So that's the stuff like, like the name of it, what Dwight D. Eisenhower called it was the quadrant of waste. <laughs> so uh, he had very strong feelings about that. Obviously, um, his time wasters were much different back when he was president, since no social media and stuff. So he had it easy. So, um, so this is our quadrant. So what we're gonna do, do you remember we wrote down all the things we do in a week, right? Now, we need to start putting those things into the specific quadrants they deserve to be. So your workout would go in important, not urgent. You know, and you're, I mean, for those of you um, who aren't self-employed, uh, the thing about uh, the big question that I usually get about um, time blocking and things like that is like, how can I do this when really it's, it's not, like I'm not in charge of my own time. And you definitely can. It's just you can control certain things. You can control how many times you check your email. You can control like when you, you know, answer specific calls or you make calls, like that sort of thing. But in a lot of cases, there's a lot you can't control. So just try to control the things you, you can. So we are gonna go through our, everything we wrote down, our brain dump of all the different things we're doing and we're going to put them into the categories they deserve. And then, like I said, most uh, should, most will find like, there's not going to be too many urgent importance that that should that box should pretty much be empty because those things, um, unless like, you know, all the examples I have are not for this time period we're currently in, but if you like your, your kids real quick are like, uh, mom, I forgot to tell you, but I have this event I need to go to tonight. And you're like, what? All right. Obviously that's an important urgent that needs to be, or actually it's a not, I, I guess it could be either one, or I guess it would be not important, urgent still needs to be done. Um, maybe you can get somebody else to delegate it if you, if you want to, but for the most part, the urgent important is going to be open. All the things that you want to do, the things that you're planning on doing are going to be the important, not urgent. And then, like I said, the, the time wasters and things you'll find in that, that 
quadrant four, that not important, not urgent. And that's the stuff we need to figure out. Um, I'm not saying we're never going to watch TV again. I'm not saying that we're never going to look at Facebook, but schedule it. One of the um, best things that happened to me uh, recently um, that and it happened by accident. Um, my email got kicked off my phone. And so I'm, I, I carry my phone with me everywhere. I don't carry my laptop with me everywhere. So all of a sudden I found myself um, answering or checking my email way less. And I realized, um, man, how many times do I, would I typically check this? And how many times did I check it to like go to my laptop, which was only a few times. And there was actually something important in there. Very little. And you know, I mean, we, how many times do we do this? We're in line at a store. We just start, you know, checking stuff. So just, just uh, food for thought there. All right. So now, Hopefully we've gotten most of our stuff in the specific quadrants. Now let's figure out how to, how to organize the day. All right. So first, you know, I, once again, this is something else we talk about all the time is your morning routine and having a specific morning routine. And that changes for everybody. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but um, there's a great book called the miracle morning. And uh, these are what Hal Elrod, the, 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 owner, uh, the writer, the author of the Miracle Morning suggests we do. So these are 10 minute blocks, except for the exercise, because you guys will be going to Fit and 42 Studios or doing the Zooms. <clears throat> but um, 10 minute blocks. So he calls it SAVERS. The acronym is SAVERS. Silence, just sitting there. Meditation, prayer whatever you believe in, focus on your breathing, but just sit there in silence, sit there and just be. Then start to work up some affirmations. Have some specific sort of affirmations that kind of uh, like towards um, your goals, things that you want to achieve, the person you want to become. Have some, some actual words that kind of resonate with you that keep you on track with, with, with those goals. While you're saying those, start to visualize. Visualize what that would look like, what that would feel like, whether it's your health and fitness goal, whether it's your financial, whatever, whatever goals you have, start to visualize them. How you, how you see your life in 10 years, what you what you want to be doing visualize that visualize that <clears throat> exercise obviously we got the exercise taken care of here you know um if it's if it's not so here's something here's something i'll tell you if you're not exercising every day then definitely fill this this 10 minute period with a walk a jog stretching walking the dog, just getting outside, just moving around. Because although let's say we're working out three times a week, which is awesome, we still want you to move the other, the other days of the week. So let's say you're doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday with us for an hour, and then also on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, you move for 10 minutes in the morning when you wake up. And I, I, I promise you, you will feel amazing. Read, find, once again, kind of going along with the affirmations, um, find stuff positive, find stuff that, uh, that's, that's self-development-esque, you know, things that are gonna help you be better. The whole goal, guys, is to be better, 1% better every day, and then, um, when it comes to describing the last one, write your journal, your process, your thoughts, reflect on what you've achieved. We typically recommend people find five things you're grateful for and write that down or say it. Um, and the goal is to try to find five different things every day. 
because then you start to realize, wow, I got a lot going for me. And then, I mean, you got to dig deeper than the, than the usuals, you know? So let's go to managing our day. So <clears throat> I'm talking to a lot of different people here. Some are self-employed, some, you know, work for other people, some are retired. So this looks different for, for everybody, but it all kind of follows the, the same thought process, all right? The same system. So one of the things we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about task batching. This is something I really believe in. And the idea is to, if you had a day planner in front of you or you had Google Calendar, you're gonna look at hour by hour and what you would do, especially when we went back and we looked at our quadrants, look at the things you have to do that are similar and try to put them near each other, put them together. So the, the idea there is whenever you switch tasks, it's kind of like sleeping. Um, I believe the last time, the, the last stat I heard was like, it takes about eight to 10 minutes for you to actually fall asleep. Even if you put your head down, eight to 10 minutes. So it's, it's the same guys when you're switching tasks. So like <clears throat> you're, you're in exercise mode, you just got done working out, you can't just sit down and start reading. You know what I mean? Like your, your heart rate's elevated. You're in a different complete mindset and there needs to be kind of like, you need to find, um, without sounding like too woo woo -y, but you have to find things that are kind of on similar frequencies in similar uh, respects. Like, um, like if you needed to, like if, once again, if you were batching your food, right? And you're cooking and you're cooking multiple things at one time. Um, is there something else you can be doing right around the kitchen that you needed to be doing as well? So like, for example, um, maybe you do, maybe you have to, um, there's, maybe you got to run some errands, right? There's, there's a, you got to go to the post office, you got to go grocery shopping. Don't do those at different times of the day. You batch those. Like that's something we already like instinctively do. Like I'm out, let me go get, take care of all the things I need to do when I'm out. <clears throat> so it's the same thing. So try to find things that kind of uh, either fit geologically to where, um, you know, you're, you're in the same environment or the same frequency. So this way you're not wasting all this time kind of transitioning into different, uh, in, into different like mindsets. All right, so um, there's some examples here. Um, once again, a lot of these are for like um, entrepreneurs and things like that, but obviously checking emails and social media, I would put them together. Um, a, any professional development or even uh, personal development, you know, just, just you need to make calls, make batch your calls, make them all at then. Check email, do the social media, you know, batch the calls. So don't, don't, th that seems like something you can do all from one area, sitting down, doing one thing, and then you knock them all out. Another, so this is something, once again, um, this is something uh, a little more towards the entrepreneur, the idea of day theming. This is something, you know, we have a lot of different areas of responsibility, whether it's, bookkeeping, training, sales, marketing, all these different things that take all these different, you know, frequencies. I'll keep using that. So it's easier. Um, like for example, I can tell you right now that um, a lot of us, you know, we, we, we do a lot of videos and stuff. Typically um, it's either at one time a day I'll do them or I'll do a bunch at one time period. I'll drink like a, couple cups of coffee <laughs> and then I'll just just do a bunch of videos I have a bunch of different topics that I want to hit and then I just I, I'm just in that mindset 
right? Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of the idea of day theming is, um, is, is sticking with, a, it's in the name, sticking with a theme of what you're trying to accomplish and, and just going all in at that, on that specific aspect of your life or business all in one day. I mean, we typically do this sort of stuff. Um, the, the first thing that came to mind is when everyone's trying to get ready for, you know, get all their, um, you know, their stuff ready for their accountant for taxes. They spend like the day getting everything so that they can just hand this big box worth of stuff to their accountant. But it's, uh, but that's, that's it. Spring cleaning is typically a day theme. <clears throat> so it's the same thing. All right. So then the big thing I want to talk about guys is finishing strong. All right. Um, the idea here, everything we're talking about, like when we're batching stuff, there's, there needs to be a, a few things I want to hit on. One, there needs to be time for you. We're talking about all these things. Um, and that's, that's kind of where, um, the task batching goes in too. And, um, I'll use a day planner. And for those of you who are more visual, maybe color coding it. Like, you know, errands is a certain color, you know, uh, you time, whatever that means, you time is a, is a certain color and you just put it on there. And, and so there's, um, there's something to this where you don't want to necessarily like Elon Musk and uh, Bill Gates say they, they, um, time block down to five minutes. But even when you're like it, there's, there's been studies done that like you can, you can knock the wind out of your sail, especially when you're time blocking like leisure. Like now is when I have fun. <laughs> so uh, in the Marine Corps, we call this, you know, our, our uh, higher ups used to like <clears throat> force us to go to the field. They would barbecue and we would call it mandatory fun day. We were forced to have fun. <laughs> and um, so you definitely don't want to do that. You don't want to kind of schedule yourself into like, like task by task by task. You can have like themes inside the day. Like um, there's specific times a day where you feel like you're on point. And that's typically like in the mornings for a lot of people, they, they feel like they're on point. They can attack those kind of those bigger tasks. But then after lunch, there's this kind of like fog. So that's when you wouldn't task or, or, or put in those really important things. Maybe that's when you're cleaning your desk or, or checking emails and answering some calls. But at the same time, you need to schedule time for yourself. You don't necessarily need to put things in that time unless you have specific things you want to do. Like it could be, you leave it blank. Maybe you want to go for a walk. Maybe you want to take a nap. Maybe you want to read. But you're scheduling that time for yourself. That's for you. Um, I know a lot of you that is exercise, but I'm also talking about um, something, some, a, a little something else too. Like a good friend of mine is a police officer. Um, and I don't think he puts this in his planner. I wouldn't, if I was him. So there's no, like I, I'm sharing something with you. I, I don't know. His wife knows, but, um, he has to park, like he has to decompress at the end of the day. So he parks like two blocks away from his house and sits for 30 minutes, just in silence. And that's so he can go home and kind of like, you know, get the, the day off him. Right. And he can, and can, he can be present with his family and his kids and his wife. So you need to really look at um, like how your day is structured, how you feel, and then kind of, kind of look at like how you can be the best for everybody. And with this finish strong portion what we're talking about is how you end the day so like i have a, a few rules which i didn't put in here i um 
I try to have no screen time an hour before bed. I try. Um, two hours before bed, I try to have no food. Like, so if I, I, I'm trying to go to bed at 10, so by 8 p.m., I'm done eating. And so I have two hours, and then basically at 9 p.m., there's no more phones. And so that's when I'll try to read. Um, unfortunately, I get, I get motivated by like reading. So um, I, I, I'm just trying to uh, just watch mindless TV. But there's, there's something there, too. With, uh, I have this personality where, like, I'm sure you guys get it. You're watching Netflix. It's late. You know you should go to bed. And then all of a sudden, that episode ends. You're like, oh, man. All right, one more. One more. <laughs> and so, and then all of a sudden, you're paying for it the next day. And you're, you're a wreck. So try to set guidelines for yourself. So what I'm trying to do now is no TV the hour. So when screens go off, all screens go off. Um, and that's tough, but I'm trying, I'm trying to do it. And uh, it's just so I can, I can keep what's important or what I say is important, important. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's our, all of our struggles is, uh, you know, um, we want these things out of life but then we let these little things creep in and then it affects us, especially our next day. And so the last thing I'll tell you about finishing strong is just like uh, we brain dump in the beginning, think about your day, think about like things that might need to get done tomorrow and, and get those all out of your head. Like, Oh, tomorrow, like there might be some things that pop up, right? You know, you can't schedule everything. So there might be some things, uh, you know, we get, I, we get ideas all the time. Once again, on all sorts of things we can do. So write them down so I can remember to talk to everybody about tomorrow or, uh, you know, just whatever pops in your head, just kind of brain dump it. This way you're going to bed like on empty. And I'm sure you guys have had it. Um, you know, there's this, there's this, uh, I just saw an article that a lot of people are having very, crazy dreams now well that that makes a lot of sense to me because we're at home our heads going a mile a minute All, a lot of us are spending time just watching consuming tv uh you know what's happening what's going on none of it's really good you know do uh, i mean um it's it's kind of the picture is painted to look bleak on purpose. That's what sells. I'm sorry, 98% of people survive. Are we celebrating that? No. <laughs> so it's, it's, um, so it's, it's kind of, but then that's in our head. And then, then, it, then it's understandable that we're having these crazy dreams. So hopefully what, you know, hopefully tonight, um, if you take anything from this, try to create a little bit of a buffer. When the TV goes off, the, the phones go off, there's a, a, an amount of time, hopefully an hour, between when your head hits the pillow and when the screens went off. And once again, journal, brain dump. I mean, this, these are kind of, it's historic times, you know? So who knows, someone may be reading your journal someday. And then um, the last thing I want to leave you guys with before I'll open this up for questions is this Winnie the Pooh quote. What day is it? Asked Pooh. It's today, Squeak Piglet. My favorite day, said Pooh. Don't schedule yourself to forget why you're doing this in the first place. Try to be present in everything you do. And the whole, and honestly, guys, I can tell you, I can tell you uh, with 100% honesty, when I don't do this, when I don't schedule my day, um, it feels as though if I'm just, if I'm just kind of uh, running on autopilot, it feels as though I didn't accomplish much. And when I feel that, I feel like I need to keep working. 
But when I schedule this, I promise you, when I schedule this, I can end at three o'clock if I don't have any, anything pressing. I can end at two o'clock. I can end at noon or 5.30 p.m. But when I end, I know that there's a lot that I accomplished behind me because it was all written down. I was, I was present in it. And so it's, it's, I could leave it behind. But when I don't write things down, and I, and I just, I wake up, uh, I mean, how many times, uh, and I'm speaking from experience because this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'll come home and my kids will ask me what I did today. And I, I don't even know what to tell them. It's all a blur. But like when I wrote things down, I'm like, oh, I got this done. I got this done. I got this done. And it, it feels like just something internally feels different. And it's like, I'm done till tomorrow. And I have that all scheduled and I'm ready to rock. So, all right, guys. I saw, let me, let me uh, stop the screen share here. There was some chats or some comments, I believe. Work out at 6 a.m. before your brain wakes up. Dieta. Well, ideally, Deanna, we don't wake up at 5.55 <laughs> and throw our hair in a ponytail and start working out. Ideally, there's a little bit of a, uh, a wake-up time, a little buffer in between the workout, which is obviously, I would think, I don't know, you guys tell me, is it harder? Um, uh, I would think this is a little harder. I think it would be really easy to stay in bed when – all you have to do is roll out of bed and go to the living room or something. Then when uh, you have to, you know, get in the car, like get ready, get in the car, drive. For me, honestly, the gyms, I've always had a, a hard time working out in our gyms because it's where I work. And it's hard not to look at things and, um, and, and, and look at things from and, and think work. As a, and be able to shut it off and just enjoy the workout with you guys. So um, I either have to go real early or when it's closed or uh, I've even gone to other gyms. And, but part of it is the drive for me. The drive and, and just getting into that frame of mind. There's, uh, there's certain music I only play when I work out. Um, you know, it's typically angry stuff. And then after that, it's back to like my classic rock. And, you know, it's, it's just, there's a whole thing of um, when it comes to this, especially the workout portion. Um, I did a video on this a long time ago, but it's like, <clears throat> you're putting on a uniform. Like there's certain, like when Superman, you know, rips open his shirt and he's Superman, there's a certain way he acts. You know, it's like, like you're about to, you're about to get on the field. So everybody like typically have some sort of uniform like the, or um, and there's a whole like um, what's a, a whole rich like rich uh, rituals sounds like such a weird word to use but like rituals around it like how you get ready what you listen to you know um, you know back in the day um, I used to do MMA you know ultimate fighting uh, there's a certain music, there's certain rituals we did before a fight that I don't necessarily do any other time. <laughs> so um, it's, it's to get yourself in a certain frame of mind. All right, let me see. All right, okay. Discipline can always be a positive thing when the will is greater than the next episode. So yes, that's tough. Because they always end, they don't end where you're like, oh, that was lame. They always end like, oh man, what's gonna happen next? But yes, fight it. it um, I don't know if you guys saw my, I don't know if we, yeah, we posted it. I believe everything's a test. Everything's a test in life. Everything's a test. Everything. We, like we were talking about. You want to, um, I feel like, um, there's a, there's a great book called The War of Art by Steve Pressfield. He calls it the resistance, where you say, when you actively say, 
there's this goal that I want. All of a sudden, this, like, this thing comes alive inside you. And its whole job is to stop you. <clears throat> and this is, uh, Steve Pressfield was talking about, like, from an artist's perspective. Artists are notorious for being late and procrastinators. And this, is, this was his way of trying to get them to, and, and authors trying to get them to get on a schedule and, and, and get things done. But I think we could all benefit from it. Um, so I believe like anytime there's that, like we were just talking about, it's the alarm hits, it's time to get up and go work out. And you're just like, you know what? I'm gonna lay in bed. The resistance won, pulled you off your game today. Doesn't mean you can't get back on it tomorrow, but the resistance won, KC zero. <clears throat> so um, Napoleon Hill had a great book as well. Um, it's called Outwitting the Devil, in which he, he swears by that he had a conversation with the devil, and that, that's basically the same thing the devil said. The devil is just trying to keep you from being the person you were intended to be. And, um, and so same thing. His whole job is just to pull you off course. And that could be with a Netflix show. <laughs> so, all right. Um, Lisa, what is your essential work and you can't create or follow stitch? You just have to go with the day. All right, so great. That's a great one, Ellie. Um, your essential, I'm assuming, um, well, let's just say your, I, I don't know your specific job, but there's definitely, there's definitely things you can control. And they might not seem like much. Like, for example, you could bring food with you. You can control what goes in your mouth. You can bring water with you. You can control what you drink. Like, these might not seem big compared to all the things we were just talking about. But taking these little, these little wins where you can get them until things change. That, that would be, um, so you can batch your food, you can get food ready, you can bring food with you. Like I know, I know for a lot of, uh, um, we have a lot of nurses out here and um, healthcare staff, then shakes, fine. You can't, you don't necessarily have the time to sit down and eat, bring shakes. You can drink shakes all day. Nobody cares that you're drinking. Uh, obviously it's a little more disrespectful when you're eating in front of somebody and you're trying to help them. But if you like people drink coffee all the time, stuff like that. So there's, there's little things, whether, whether, whether what I just said resonates, um, there's things in your schedule that you can absolutely say, okay, I can control that. I can control this little thing. And they might not be, they might not seem like needle movers, but enough of them will move the needle. Good seminar, two important points that will help you sleep. Get tomorrow's tasks off your head on your paper. Turn off your emails off a few hours before bed. Yes, I agree. Richard Marshak. Interesting last name, sir. <clears throat> Very close to Washak. All right. <clears throat> um, so, uh, Yes, you guys are talking to each other, which is awesome. Christy, I meal prep two days each week. Yes, it's not so overwhelming to do in one day. Uh, here's another little life hack. I have three crock pots. I throw everything in the three crock pots. It takes me 10 minutes to throw everything in. And then six hours later, I batch everything. So, um, <clears throat> so that's kind of, uh, well, a lot of what we do in my household is um, – I just spent an extra $19, oh, $38 on two more crock pots and um, saves me a lot of time and energy. Um, any other questions, guys? I feel as though this is the largest Friday night we've ever had. And uh, I'm honored that you guys spent it with me. Um, I'd like to think it's because of me, but it's probably because of the topic. But um, if you guys have any questions on any of this, one, I'm, uh, this is being recorded. So we're going to be um, dropping this in all the different members pages. And if for whatever reason you guys aren't a part of those or whatever, you can just message me and I'll, I'll get it to you. 
Um, other than that, if you have any questions, please reach out. Like I said, this is something that I'm constantly researching. Um, oh, if you guys, <clears throat> there's, I mean, there's a lot of books on this. Um, uh, Brendan Bouchard's High Performance Habits, Seven, uh, oh, what is it? Um, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. There's, um, was it the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Um, what's some other ones? Here, hold on. I'll pull up my, my Kindle. Ah, The Miracle Morning, like I just mentioned. Come on. Um, essentialism, that's another great one. We got, let me check this one now. Let me go on Audible. <clears throat> yes, High Performance Habits by Brendan Bouchard, Atomic Habits by James Clear, Best Self, Life and Air, um, couple, let's see if there's anything else. I think that's about it, guys. Let me see. Yes. So for now, that's all I got for you. Um, yeah, if you, um, let's see. Uh, yep, always put yourself first. That's right, Tanita. Love you out here in Palm Desert. Love you, YouTube videos. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, that's a great one, Lynn. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that, guys. I feel, uh, I do miss all you guys in the desert. Um, it's funny, when you, uh, when you leave, you're like, damn, I should have spent more time at each place. <laughs> you know, you never, you never, what's that saying uh, in the office? It's like, you never know you're in the good times until you leave the good times, right? But I'm not saying, I'm loving Texas. I'm loving it. You guys should all come visit and you'll probably love it too. That's why like 800,000 Californians moved to Texas like last year. So, <laughs> so there's something out here. <clears throat> so anyways, guys, uh, take care. We'll talk to you soon, all right? And keep living that Fit and 42 life. Peace out. <laughs> See a lot of peace. Let me eat.